Well, today we finally get to look under the hood. Sophie Grégoire Trudeau actually comes out and shares a little bit publicly in an interview about her memoir and her time with Justin Trudeau. And it seems like she still kind of loves him. I don't know if this is a publicity stunt. I don't know if she's trying to get more book sales. I did talk about this in one of my previous videos where I looked up her book and I shared my screen and all that stuff. And most of the comments were saying, I'm not buying that book. I don't care. I'm not giving her my money. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into it, I would encourage you guys to smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. We are very close to 400,000 subscribers, and it means the world to me if we could get there sooner than later. Without further ado, let's get into the video. We do have a few things to cover before we get to the Sophie Grégoire Trudeau stuff, such as this video here of a recent press conference, well, actually today, of Justin Trudeau talking about a whole bunch of stuff. And towards the end of it, he had this to say. Now, the Liberal Party of Canada posted so this is the official Liberal Party on their X account has 866 likes and 1500 comments. It's never looking good for them. Here's the video. Anyone who wants to be prime minister of this country needs to be clear with Canadians about whose votes he wants and who he stands with. If Pierre Polyev wanted to be a responsible leader, I'll even give him the words. This is what he should say. I reject categorically the endorsement and the support of Diagolon and of Alex Jones. Because Diagolon is a violent white nationalist organization and Alex Jones is a garbage conspiracy theorist. That's all Pierre Polyev would have to say. But he won't say it. And that tells you about the kinds of choices he's making as a leader. You know what the funniest part about this is? This is coming from the man who publicly endorsed a Nazi. Justin Trudeau invited a Nazi into parliament and everybody stood up and clapped. That's absolutely insane that Trudeau is trying to give Pierre Polyev any pointers at all about how to conduct his run for uh, prime minister. Anyways, I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments about that. Next up, we get a short clip of the food bank in Hamilton getting absolutely out of hand. That is insane. There, that's the thing with Canada right now is nobody can afford food and everybody seems to be resulting more towards food banks. It used to be like one in 20 people. Then it was like one in 15, one in 10. Now it seems like one in five people. It's wild, man. Like, do you guys have any experience of going to food banks? Have you ever been to a food bank? Do you know anybody that goes to a food bank? Let me know down below in the comments. Next up, we got Pierre Polyev on X saying, after nine years of Trudeau, the food people must eat Eat is past its best before date, so is he. Well, with the price of groceries still high, more Canadians are pushing the limits on what is safe to eat and when. A survey by Dalhousie's Agri-Food Analytics Lab found almost 60% of people say they're willing to eat food past its best before date. It's perhaps not entirely surprising then that 20% think they've gotten sick from eating expired food. Nearly half say they are doing more to try to make their food last longer, like throwing it in the freezer. Yeah, man, the freezer is the way to go. I pretty much freeze um, all, if not uh, most of our meats, just because things go bad. You leave chicken in the fridge and a couple days go by, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden it goes bad. But are you feeling the pinch economically, like financially? Are you, are you, are you finding groceries are just so outrageously priced? Let me know down below in the comments. I think everybody is in the same boat. And finally, we've got what everybody probably tuned in to see, Justin Trudeau. His ex-wife is opening up publicly about some stuff. There is, there's still so much love between us, Sophie Grigoire Trudeau says of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. CTV News, their official account posted that, as well as CP24. Sometimes when you truly love somebody, you set them free. Sophie Grigoire Trudeau on human connection, mental health, and separation from Justin Trudeau. Let's take a look at this interview. 
Gregoire Trudeau has spent much of her life in the spotlight as a television host, a volunteer, and in politics. But besides her family, one thing she has championed is the importance of mental health. And she delves deeper into her own challenges and also calls on some of the world's biggest and best experts in her part memoir, part self-exploration book, Closer Together, Knowing Ourselves, Loving Each Other. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, welcome to CP24 Breakfast. Appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you. I'm an early riser, so it's yes. good for me. <laughs> it's good for you. And this is an interesting book. You know, self, what, what was its title here is Self-Exploration book you know uh, there's a bit of self-help in here as well and I'm really curious from what I've read of this book and, and I only got it last night so I haven't read it cover to cover but I got the sense you know it, 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 do you think that it's possible for a person now in our later stages of our stages of our adult lives to recognize what's happened in our past and change it now or do you think the die may be too cast in some cases it is absolutely never too late to look at your mind to look at your trauma to look at your you know your history from the your childhood bond of attachment and I talk about that in a book mm -hmm. how somebody took care of you by touch by sight by care by presence by playfulness kind of like validating your perception of reality and yourself as a child from zero to three and then that's a visceral human need that everybody has and then there's authenticity being able to express who you truly are everybody's unique everybody has a unique personality but without having to change your behavior to feel loved we all do it mm -hmm. we do it as kids with our parents we do it with our friends with our loved ones with our in our romantic relationships and it's okay but as long as we know where we move from and if you don't think that the inner child in you is still active in your adult relationships you'll be surprised about what you read in this book because mm -hmm. I went to the best experts out there and I said to myself if I have access to this as a mental health advocate for the past 20 years what's the point of keeping it to myself I want to share this with the world so people can be known to themselves mm -hmm. and Looking at the state of the world and all the crises that we're facing, if we don't develop more emotional leadership, and what, it, what is emotional leadership? Taking a breath when you don't want to, resolving a conflict and calm when you really want to scream and shout, uh, feeling your emotions rise and being able to regulate your nervous system. These are, they're not huge leaps to take in your lives. There are easy methods to come back into your own home. Like it's homeostatus and, you know, scientific language, but come back inside yourself into a safe, calm place. People on this planet are in their alert nervous system all the time and they feel insecure. And when we feel insecure in ourselves, we are threatened by the difference of others. Mm -hmm. Okay, not to compare what she's saying to be the opposite of what conservatives are, because I, I don't want conservatism or that mentality to be about, it's, it's not about suppressing your emotions and just doing what you need to do. But like, Kind of. I think liberals and the whole liberal ideology is getting stuck up here in your mind, focusing on how you're feeling, creating a safe space and all of that stuff. It's all emotions based. And that's great. Like, I don't want to dismiss that because it's important, right? To be in tune with your emotions and to be self-aware, all that stuff that there's, there's validity in that. But the question is more like, at what point are you doing it a little bit too much and not just living life and i feel like she is embodying what liberalism is it's just very weird cashing in on a book you were married you're not dating you were married to the prime minister you're talking about how much you love him and yet you're doing something that's literally causing him to have international backlash it's not a good look now are people not going to vote for trudeau who were previously going to vote for trudeau because of you know the separation or divorce i don't think so but She's writing a book. She's cashing in on it. Their net worth has already skyrocketed over the past few years. Somehow, even though he makes Justin Trudeau as prime minister, supposedly only makes like three or four hundred thousand dollars a year, but is worth what, like ninety million dollars. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. It just seems opportunistic. It feels like she's saying one thing and doing another. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. And I'm just working my way through it as I talk. But it really feels like Sophie is saying one thing and doing doing another let me know down below if you agree if you have any counterpoints to that here we go so take a look at the world right now it's you kind of get into so much in your book I mean you touch on your childhood you talk about you know different tips that people can consider uh, you're so vulnerable you're so honest with your story what was that like really opening up to people because there are things I think in this book that people don't know about you that you're gonna share so 20 years ago when I was working as a newcomer uh, in Quebec as a TV and radio host uh, I shared my story about eating disorders and I was like oh my god I'm not gonna get any more contracts after talking mm -hmm. about this they're gonna think oh it's the girl who suffers from this eating disorder or whatever it was 
there was so much more stigma during those days. Now it's changing a little bit, but there's no other way to teach than one, by experience, and two, by a place of integrity and congruence and, and vulnerability and truth. And if I do this, you know, I know people will think that I'm, I'm in the spotlight, but my life is not in the spotlight. What people see is like 1% of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom, I know I'm an ally, I'm a friend. I have so many other things going on and that keep me busy. And I wanna make sure that I put my presence and give my pre presence where it matters most. Yeah. So the con Using taxpayers' money to jet set around the world and to cash in on this massive honeypot of taxpayers' money through, you know, carbon taxes and, and now the capital gains tax, like all that. Is, is that something that you're talking about, Sophie? Is she says, I'm so much more than just Sophie, and she listed, like, two or three things. I mean, like, okay, well, it's your time to shine. Why not use that time to say what more you are instead of saying etc oh kind of weird the content of this book moved me from within from a deep place and it's all I wish that it resonates in people's minds and hearts. Uh, so you're a parent, we're parents as well, right? And, and this book, I'm sure, will help parents as well. I wonder how it helped you in terms of being a parent. I don't know if it helped you be more present with your kids or just from the experts you spoke to. You learned a few things that could really help, especially in the teenage years. So I have two teenagers, 15 and 16. I have a 10-year-old. It did absolutely help me. When I was doing those interviews, which lasted much longer than what you see in the book, I had to edit to come back to the essential. I learned so much about parenting that parenting is not a role. But we're told in our society, you are the parent, you must direct this and that. But by letting our children be independent, by trusting them, by showing them the world, they can be ready for the world. Mm -hmm. We have to stop, you know, being insecure in our own selves and wanting to control their environment at all times and trying to plan their lives. They need to take low risk, low costs in child childhood, scorching a knee, going up that tree, falling down so that when they get to the teenage years, the brain actually knows how to become resilient mm -hmm. at high risk, high cost. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's kind a of like a, important. Yeah. It's the natural development of the brain and we're impairing it with our screens, with our sedentarity, with our lack of human connection. Yeah. And human connection can cause the biggest trauma in one's life. But the beautiful irony is that human connection can heal it all. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Let me understand this. Human connection can heal it all, but she was married to a guy who imposed anti-human connection policies on an entire country. Am I am I fully understanding that correctly? Did, like, am I did I just misinterpret what she just said, or does that seem extremely hypocritical and kind of gaslighting esque type of comments to make? I don't know. I have no personal beef with Sophie, except the fact that she was married to a guy that is screwing, actively screwing 41 million people. And it's just the whole thing is just weird. Mm -hmm. uh, on human connection, and you kind of alluded to this, how the temperature outside, it, it's difficult right yep. now for a lot of people. It seems as though a lot of people are angry, they're struggling. How important do you think that human connection is to kind of get us through this time in our lives? Hum human connection is everything. Just right now in studio, when we're looking at each other, <clears throat> you pick up in one milli one milli hundred of a second on my facial expressions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So during the pandemic, people suffered so much, right? Yeah. And we know that human connection is key to just calming our nervous systems. And if we foster human connection, we'll be able to not only bring people closer together, no pun intended, because it's the title of my book, but I mm -hmm. didn't choose it by coincidence. I chose it very profoundly with much thought because without human connection, we see what we, we can become sick, you know, and playfulness and, and have uh -huh. because self discovery and facing our truths is painful and we're not taught to sit with our pain without feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So that's another exercise that we should, you know, kind of like instill in our kids and tell. So almost like what you did and you and your husband did and actively promoted for many, many years, you, you, you don't think that maybe that had any negative repercussions on society. Like, Am I tripping out, folks? Am I tripping out? But it feel like she's trying to gaslight us. Tell them that, yes, life is painful. And there's also a beauty to that. Because when you dance between the light and the darkness, between happiness and unhappiness, you kind of notice that we weren't 
we weren't meant to come onto this earth to be happy and pink and everything is fine. Mm -hmm. We came here to be conscious and responsible of our own individual growth so we can contribute to the world mm -hmm. and people can actually feel a sense of purpose. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah, this book, of course, Sophie, was, was written before your separation from, from the Prime Minister. Uh, but I wonder, the title is closer together. We know families come in all kinds of <laughs> shapes and sizes yeah. these days. You speak still very fondly, of course, uh, of, of Justin Trudeau as well. I, I wonder how your family is closer together while also there are parts of it that are apart in days. I wonder, I wonder how that goes. Beautiful question. Uh, you know, sometimes when you truly love somebody, you set them free somewhere on the path um, out of respect and admiration in different ways, even if it, it doesn't, it's not convenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not my wish. But when things change, it's not the end. We are taught that, that we have to slay a relationship in order to change its structure. And Esther Perel, you know, I quote her in my book, it's not true. And when we live in a society where success is marriage and divorce is failure and there's nothing in between, we leave a dramatic emotional burden on children yeah. and it's unacceptable. We have to rise up to become more relationally and emotionally mature mm -hmm. so we can actually get along together so much, you know, so much better so our children can see that dynamic. And we're not faking it, we love each other. When I love with my whole soul, I love then, I love now, and I will always love. It's not because a structure changes that, that love evaporates, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. and Easy for her to say when she had none of the consequences and got to reap all the benefits of dating somebody else and putting aside Justin Trudeau. And I'm not going to go out and say that they had, that she had an affair, but it, the timing of everything certainly seemed like publicly. Yeah. It kind of seems like she did have an affair. And then she also had an affair with taxpayers money. She totally has manipulated the system and used taxpayers money to her own advantage. And she's not even a politician. Like that's, that's adjacent screwing. That's not even direct screwing. That's adjacent screwing. It's insane. And you've gone through that separation in such a public way. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. I could only imagine how difficult that is. Do you worry at all people are going to pick up your book and think, oh, there's going to be gossip. There's going to be dirt. There's going to be information in there that, you know. Too bad for the ones who want the gossip. I'm not a gossiper. I don't have yeah. time for that. Uh, there's truth in there. There's authenticity. There's vulnerability. I think that's much more constructive than, than gossip. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, Sophie Gregoire Greg Trudeau, good luck with the book. Close and together. you have an event later today, yes, tell right? Us about the event at the yes, well. at the Indigo at the Well, I'll be in conversation on stage. Uh, and it's going to be an incredible evening and people can get a book and I can sign the book and we can all meet on the path closer yeah. together. Oof, that is brutal that she's cashing in on all of this and even has the audacity to say, you know, we love each other and when you love somebody so much, you set them free. Yeah, I don't know. Or, or, you, or you fight for it to happen, for it to work out. I don't know, kind of weird. I feel like she uses a lot of that time to gaslight us and say how important human connection is when she was married to a man who implemented anti-human connection policies for many, many years and something that people will never forget and are still not over it and likely won't be over it for a very, very long time. For a lot of people, man, that was traumatizing. People lost their jobs. People lost friends. People lost family. And not just in death, but through, you know, different points of view. And then also in death, right? Not being able to be there for your loved ones, your friends, whatever it is, man. Like, just, just totally insane that for her to have the audacity to go on national television and say, human connection is so important. Bro, where were you years ago? Where were you in 2019 or 2020? Kind of weird, opportunistic, and I'd love to know what you guys down in the comments have to say about this. That's where we're going to end today's video, everybody. Uh, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.